save login, register or subscribe to save articles for later. Normal text size larger text size very large text size O. Outside the arrivals hall at Samui Airport, the hovering taxi van drivers had no idea about the famous Australian who had the night before. It was last Saturday morning on KOH Samui, and while Shane Warne's sudden little more than 12 hours before had shocked Australia and the sporting world, word was still to get around on the holiday island in the Gulf of Thailand. At that stage, the back street leading to Samujana Villa's resort, where Warne suffered a suspected heart attack, was not yet cordoned off by security. Inside, Warne's business manager and friend Andrew Niofatu was seated on a couch in an office adjacent to the resort's small foyer. Opposite him, slumped behind a desk, was Gareth Edwards, a poker-playing friend of Warne's and chief marketing officer of the resort. Shane Warne had visited KOH Samui on four occasions. Along with two other traveling companions, Hong Kong-based sports website owner and fellow poker enthusiast Tom Hall and Fred Witherow, another of Warne's mates, they had been less than 24 hours into a five-day stay with the cricket great when Neofatu found him in his room unresponsive. As Neofatu and Edwards began making heartbreaking phone calls from the resort office, though, the significance of what had occurred the previous evening was still dawning on a local population, not exactly a you fate with cricket. The secluded Samujana Villas resort lies off the main road in the northeast corner of the island. SMH that began to change by the afternoon as Australian government officials arrived on KOH Samui, having boarded the first flights they could. The group included the ambassador to Thailand, Alan Kinnan, and the consuls general from Bangkok and Phuket, who quickly headed for Bop Hut Police Station, a rundown three-level building about a 10-minute drive from the resort. The local and provincial level police had by then been made aware of Warren's stature, with their knowledge assisted in part by the fact that the Surat Thani police chief, Police Major General Satit Falpanet, had spent time backpacking around Australia and knew how much Australians loved their national game. Bob Hutt Station would become a hive of activity for the next three days as investigators, consular staff and Warren's friends also came and went and an increasingly attentive Thai media contingent converged, sweating it out in the steamy conditions outside the front door. The task for the DFAT team led by Mkinnon, a career public servant who was behind the creation of Australia's Department of Home Affairs and Office of National Intelligence, was to get Warren's body back to Australia as quickly as possible as desired by his family. Friends of Warren walk into Bop Hut Police Station on KOH Samui. AP. Despite saying they suspected nothing suspicious from the outset, police were intent on completing an investigation into his warns and on sending his body across to the mainland in an ambulance, via ferry and then in a police convoy on the highway, for a postmortem. After lengthy talks, they agreed to order a less invasive examination than a full autopsy, complying with the wishes of Warren's family. In the grim circumstances, it was a positive outcome for Warren's friends and the Australian government delegation. They were rattled, however, when they learnt on Sunday afternoon about an unexpected intrusion into the ambulance van carrying the body. An ABC cameraman had captured a German woman, later identified as former journalist Barbara Wonke, walking past policemen, and after speaking to the ambulance driver, briefly entering the back of the van with a bunch of flowers, as it was parked at the front of the vehicle hold on the ferry. Stills from footage of German woman Barbara Wonke speaking to an ambulance driver, who then allowed her inside the back of the van with Warren's body. ABC there were fears that Ms Wonke, a KOH Samui resident and prominent figure in the hospitality industry, might have taken a photograph inside and if so, could seek to sell it for publication. There was further concern that if Australian media revealed the security failure publicly, it would embarrass the Thai police to such an extent that they would cease cooperating in fast-tracking the return of Warren's body to Australia. One person in the Warren camp went as far as to speculate such a loss of face for the police could damage diplomatic relations between Australia and Thailand, which are in their 70th year in 2022, and have featured high-profile stress points, as well as triumphs in recent years, 
from the bid to return footballer Hakim Olarebi to Australia to the heroic role of Australian divers Craig Challen and Richard Harris in the Thai cave rescue. Ultimately, when the story emerged on Monday, police owned the security breakdown, admitting they had erred in allowing the woman access to the ambulance and vowing to release Warren's body all the same. Officers on KOH Samui had quickly tracked down Woinki, finding her within an hour via CCTV vision at the ferry terminal and by the number plates of her car. After she was questioned at Bob Hutt Station, Thailand's Assistant National Police Chief, Police Lieutenant General Surakate Hakpan, told the Herald and The Age, police were satisfied she was just an FC, meaning a member of Warren's club of fans. Australia's ambassador to Thailand, Alan Kinnan, left, at a press conference on Monday with Police Lieutenant General Surakate Hakpan, right. We found that she did not mean harm, said Lieutenant General Surakate. She just wanted to pay her last respects. Wonki was made to sign a declaration that would open her up to prosecution if she ever distributed photos from inside the van. She was adamant she didn't take any, telling the Herald and the aide she was simply offering her condolences and did not mean it as a negative act. The police at Bob Hutt Station are also believed to have interviewed the four masseuses shown on CCTV leaving the resort after giving massages to Warren and his friends. Photographic stills from the footage were revealed as the UK tabloids arrived on the island this week, having been delayed by the red tape involved with entering Thailand as a result of the pandemic. Loading as well as the photos of the masseuses, the Red Tops published pictures from the final hours of Warren's life the legspin champion walking into the resort with a handful of shirts from a favorite tailor in the area, a packet of cigarettes in his room, and the INS and outs of his suitcase. He had spent $1,500 ordering a suit and other clothes at the tailor shop, just a three-minute drive from the resort. Tailor Pasaram Pandey told Nine on Monday that Warren had bounced into his store with energy. He was funny, he was good. A nice guy, I don't know what happened, he said. There was an eeriness to those images of Warren returning from the tailor to his villa, knowing now what was ahead. He had been supposed to meet with his friends for a drink and dinner that night and fly out on Tuesday after a five-day getaway. Tragically, his holiday and life were cut short only hours later. Now, sadly, on KOH Samui, the name Shane Warren will never be forgotten.